So once you've worked on that basic technique of how you can change your setup when you're chipping a golf ball to reduce the power but increase the level of control, and you've worked on a few little distances and you're just hitting the golf ball nice and comfortably onto the green, we can then see how the technique and the swing can alter the distance that you're hitting the golf ball but still sticking with the same club. So keeping the pitching wedge for the time being, let's go ahead with the same setup position, ball in the middle, little open stance, body weight onto that left side. Now as we take the golf club back, it really wants to be a, a movement that's dominated by the shoulders and the upper body. It can almost feel like a long putting stroke. We don't really want to get too much of the hands involved in the, in the back swing and definitely not too much of the hands involved in the through swing. In the follow through here, if we feel there's a lot of hand action, it can look like there's an element of scooping the golf ball in there, almost trying to help the golf ball into the air, which is a real disaster in terms of getting a good strike on the golf ball. So if you find that you're hitting the ball thin and hitting the ball heavy when you're trying to pit, chip and pitch the golf ball, often this can be the cause of the problem. So, as we take the golf club back on the backswing, the length of the backswing should be equaled with the length of the follow through. If we have a, a knee height backswing, we should therefore take a knee height follow through. If the backswing is to the hips, the follow through should be likewise to the hips. But each time we're keeping the wrists here relatively strong and certainly not getting too flicky. Now, one of the great checkpoints that you could use to see whether you are flicking, scooping and lifting the golf ball in your follow through would be to take the golf club from a good setup position but slide your hands right the way down to the club head end here. That should position the shaft running sideways past your front hip. Then take the swing from here, a little back swing and the shaft will just move a few inches away from your body and then in the follow through that shaft should stay away from your body. If I don't use my left hand here to release the golf club, the shaft runs away from my body down my left side. So it's back and through. Now if you are flicking the golf club or scooping it or releasing your wrist too excessively, you'll find that you hit yourself with the hip or hit yourself in the hip with the shaft of that golf club. So there'll be a flicking motion in there and you'll be scooping the golf ball upwards. So when we look at this with a normal grip and setup, I can see that as I do that movement, the shaft of the golf club still runs past the side of my body this way. If I was to scoop the golf ball, the shaft of the club would come through my body and cut me in half effectively. So let's make sure that as we chip, we hold that follow through off to keep the golf club ring down the left side of your body.